I'm really terrible at these openings, I gotta tell you. As some of you may or may not know, my day job is as a visual effects supervisor. Right now, I am doing the show Timeless for NBC. By the way, it just aired last Sunday. If you tune in, that's kind of how you support this channel, because that's what pays me. So tune in to Timeless at 10 p.m. 9 central, only on NBC. Doon, doon, doon. Anyway, I think that's the NBC jingle. Anyway, I've gotten more and more excited about this concept of the Instagram story, really telling stories and really making provocative, high bar content through this new medium. So without further ado, on to today's topic, how to do a really cool parallax effect with a still photo for your Instagram story. It's kind of a mouthful, but that's what it is. Here we go. I was trying to put that on the lens to do this, but it didn't work. Just roll the intro. It's just okay so i use my iphone x to take this photo this was a extra on the show timeless i don't know who this gentleman is if you happen to see this video or anybody happens to know who he is reach out to me now i use the focus app which i talk a lot about in my other videos and the focus app will spit out two photos it'll spit out the original photo and it'll spit out one where it does its thing and it blurs the background and look at that doesn't that look amazing i mean it really draws your focus to him i did a little bit of color work on it already i kind of lifted the green crunched it a little bit. So again, taken with the iPhone and nothing more. Let's just open it in Photoshop. And there it is in Photoshop. Let's take a look at some of the new features in Photoshop and how they're going to help me do this a whole lot faster. Conceptually, what I need to do is I need to slice this into like two or three images stacked on top of each other. I need to cut this guy out and I really don't want to spend a lot of time doing it. I was playing around and the new version of Photoshop has this thing where you go select subject and watch this takes a little bit of thinking, but look at that. So it did a okay job of selecting my subject. It didn't do the greatest job. I've seen it do better, but it got a lot of it. So now I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool and just start minusing and plusing selections. I can zoom in a little bit, just hit control plus to zoom in a little bit. I wanna stress that because it's, it's kind of a blurry background and, and we're gonna be doing some clever tricks to it, this doesn't need to actually be too good. Okay, so here we go. So I did, I would say, an adequate job of cutting him out. If I hit the Q key, I can get a, a mask example and see where I can refine things just a little bit better. Now I'm gonna go to select and I'm gonna go select and mask. This gives me the ability to just refine the edge a little bit. I'm just gonna soften the edge a little bit. In edge detection, I'm, smart radius like never works for me. So I'm just gonna go radius three pixels, add a little bit of smoothing and a little bit of feathering. And you can see that it's just softening his edges. That's too much. Just a little bit, it's gonna go a long way and I'm gonna hit okay. And I am now going to hit control J to make a new layer. So control J or um, I think command J on the Macintosh makes a new layer from selection. I've created this layer. I am gonna blow this up just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna hit control T on my new layer in order to select it. And I'm gonna use, I think shift, shift alt and, uh, and grab a corner. And that's gonna allow me to blow it up from the center. I want it to be slightly bigger than it originally was. And I'm just gonna use the arrow keys and the move tool to move it down in place and just try and cover up the original as much as possible. And I, so now I've got this slightly larger version of himself. I'm gonna take my background and I'm gonna duplicate it, mainly for safety's sake in case I mess something up. So now in this background, what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna paint in and make a clean plate background. You can see how you can see the gun here in his backpack and the gun here. I need to hide things like that. What I found is the quickest and easiest sort of cheat to do this is to control click on my blown up layer. So I've selected it and I'm gonna go select, modify, expand. I'm gonna expand it by about 20 pixels. That's sort of my default. I have my background selected though. So I've got this layer, the background selected. I'm gonna hit Q so that I can see what my selection is. And I'm actually gonna blur the selection. So when you hit Q, you can actually work on this mask. So if I go filter blur, Gaussian blur, I'm actually blurring the mask. So I just wanna soften that up just a little bit. And I'm gonna hit Q again. And now I have more of a soft selection. Now here's the, the cool part. I'm just gonna hit Shift F5. It's the same as going to edit fill right here, edit fill, shift F5. I'm gonna make sure it's selected on content aware with color adaptation checked. I'm gonna make sure my background copy layer is selected and I'm gonna make sure my selection is live and I'm gonna hit okay. And it's probably gonna make some like really weird, funky pattern for us, let's see. Yeah, look at that, super weird. But if I turn this layer back on, it looks pretty good, right? And that's all that matters. There might be areas where you just wanna take maybe the, the J tool the spot healing brush tool and just if you see like a little piece of hair here you can just rub over it and 
blur it out a little bit just to be safe. There we go. So that looks pretty darn good. I am going to name this layer MG. This is my mid ground and I'm going to name this layer BG. This is my background. In my original idea for this tutorial, I was going to stop right here, but I was thinking it'd be cool to take this even a step further. I'm looking for areas where I can have more parallax, more layers. And you know what really pops out to me is his hand and his hat. I'm just gonna use my friend, the tried and true pen tool to cut out his arm and his hat. There's a lot of tutorials out there on the pen tool. If you're gonna get serious about Photoshop at all, you just kinda gotta learn it. It is the best method by far to cut things out. There's all these auto tools, but in the end, this is the way we've been doing it for years. All right, that is probably good enough. Let's see, control click, Q. That looks pretty good. It's a little harsh though, again, in the edges. So I'm just gonna use that same select, select and mask. Make a smart radius of three. You can see what's going on. I'm actually gonna shift the edge in a little bit maybe. Let's see, just a tad bit. And feather it just the slightest bit and smooth it out just the slightest bit. That looks pretty good. And having my MG layer selected, I am now going to hit Control J to create a new layer just of the arm and the hat. I'm gonna call this FG for foreground. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I hit Control T and I do shift alt and grab a corner and I blow it up just ever so slightly so that it is bigger than it should be. But no one's ever really gonna notice that. I'm gonna have to do that same technique again where I am going to, one more time, control click on the FG to make that my selection. And because I'm super paranoid, I am gonna duplicate my MG. I'm going to modify, expand. I'm only do about like 10 pixels this time. And I'm just gonna see what I get if I hit Shift F5, Content Aware Fill. That looks pretty good. Let's see what it looks like with this on it. So that's it. So I've got my FG, my MG, and my BG. This background layer I can actually toss now because I'm feeling pretty confident in what I have here. I'm gonna save, of course. And I'm gonna do one more thing just to celebrate the premiere of my show. This could be any text that you want, but I'm just gonna say like, hashtag timeless. And I did it underneath, so let me just put it right here. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit so it's under the hand. I think that adds some depth to it. Let's get out of Photoshop and go into Adobe Premiere where I have already set up a basic project. I'm gonna go File, Import, and it's this one. It's Timeless WW1 IG Parallax PSD. Now when it imports, it's very important that you select individual layers, not merge all layers. So select individual layers and hit OK. And what you're gonna get is a folder with your four layers. All right, guys, so now that we've imported our Photoshop file into Premiere, we have to build our timeline. So I'm gonna take our BG layer and just drop it down onto the empty timeline area. That's the easiest way to make a timeline. Mine defaults to 24p, it could be 30, doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna just stack everything the way it was stacked in Photoshop. So our next layer is the MG. Our next layer is the text. Our next layer is the FG. So this is the same exact thing that we had in Photoshop, now in Premiere. I'm gonna go to 15 seconds and I'm just gonna hit E select the, the edge and hit E on each one of these layers that dra drags it out. So now that I have a 15 second timeline, we also need to take this sequence that we created and change the size of it. I am going to go into it in sequence settings. For Instagram, it is 1080 by 1920. This is the actual size that we're working with. Obviously our image is way too big. What I wanna do is I wanna shrink it down layer by layer at the very start, Let's say, 70% for every single layer. So I'm just gonna select every layer, go to scale and make it all 70%. See what it looks like, 70, 70, 70. The text is kind of a different story. It's too big from the get go. So let's just drop that down to 60%, maybe even 50% and we can reposition it. The nice thing is you have a little bit more flexibility with text than you do with the image. We are going to cheat parallax by zooming in at different speeds on the images. Let's start with the background. We're gonna do a keyframe at the beginning of scale at 70%, and we're gonna to go to the last frame. I'm gonna change it to 75%. Now we are going to go to the MG. Now here's the thing. If I do it at the same speed as the BG, which is 75%, if I zoom into 75% at the end of this, you are going to see no cool effect whatsoever. It's just gonna look like a slow and steady zoom in, which is in fact what it is. So what we're doing 
is we're cheating. Instead of doing a zoom, we want to do a camera push. A zoom is when a lens changes focal lengths and you zoom in on something, but the background and the foreground all, all blow up at the same time. A push in is when the camera actually moves forward. You're actually tracking the camera forward at an object. And what you'll notice is that the background and the foreground and the midground all change sizes and positions at different speeds. Everything further away looks like it's moving slower than everything close up. So with that being said, what we want to do is we want to make this, the zoom up a little bit faster on every single layer that gets closer to camera. So for the MG, we're going to start at the same 70, but instead of being at 75 by the end, let's try being at like 78. You can see now that if I scrub through this, it looks like our guy is closer than the background. I'm gonna boost this up just a little bit, let's say 80, and I think that's gonna give us our nice, slow and steady push in on our gentleman here. Let's skip over the text for right now and focus on the arm. So I'm gonna select the arm layer. On the first frame, I'm also going to turn on my little stopwatch to put a keyframe. I'm gonna to go to my last frame, and I'm gonna try 85 maybe. And now let's drop in our text. Let's just turn on our text layer, which is obviously not zooming yet, so that looks weird. And again, we will click on the text layer. So we're just gonna kind of wing it since we had to shrink the text a little bit more. Let's just say the text goes from 50 to 55. That's okay, but maybe a little bit more than 55, maybe like 57, maybe even a little bit more. Let's just go for 60. Just kind of kind of wing it at this point. That looks pretty cool. By having that overlap of the hand over the text timeless, you're never gonna think that it's in front of the hand. And that is pretty much it, but there's some more stuff. Now we're gonna do a little bit of an intermediate technique. When you're pushing in on a subject, you're actually racking focus. When I get really close, the closer I am to the camera, the more the stuff in the background gets blurry. So the closer our guy gets to the camera, the more we can blur the background and the foreground because we're focusing on him. So I'm just gonna apply the simplest Gaussian blur. It's my favorite blur, it's, it's quick, it's fast, it's real time for most computers. I'm gonna apply it to our BG. I'm gonna check the box at the beginning and keep it at zero, but by the end, let's bring it up to like 20, maybe even more, like 40. And now let's see, very subtly, again, this is happening over 15 seconds. Our background is gonna get a little bit more blurry as we're pushing in on our guy. All right, let's do the same thing with our FG, with our hand. Let's just, in fact, I'm just gonna actually just copy the effect, Control C on the Gaussian blur here, and I'm gonna go to my first frame and just paste it on my foreground hand, and you can see it gets really blurry there by the end. I think that's a little bit too blurry. I'm gonna go to my last keyframe on my hand, I'm gonna drop this down to like 10, maybe 15. It's very subtle but it's there. Something that I think would really make this awesome is a little bit of movement in the environment. So think about your environment. Is it a cloudy day? Could the clouds move? Is it raining? Could you add rain to it? There's lots of different things you could do. In this case, because this guy is obviously in some kind of war-torn area, I started thinking, what if I could put some embers or some ash or something like that floating through the area? So all I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm just gonna type burning ember stock footage. Here we go. Embers and Sparks royalty free stock footage. Worminator's free effects. Just download it with a YouTube downloader and key the black part out. That to me sounds like you are, it's a Creative Commons attribution license, which means I'm allowed to reuse this, which is great. Worminator's free effects is the YouTube channel to go to for awesome effects like this. I am giving this guy full credit for this burning ember thing. All right guys, so I downloaded that piece of stock footage and here it is in Adobe Premiere. I want this to be behind him. So I'm gonna grab these three layers here. I'm gonna drag them up, hold down shift so that I don't slip anything. I'm just gonna drag my embers, get rid of the audio, trim it to the length here. So what I need to do now that it's on black is go to my effects controls, go to my blend mode, and change this to screen. I'm just gonna scale it up a bunch. It might be easier actually to go back to normal and then scale it just so you can see how big you need to scale it. And also I can raise my position just a little bit. All right, now let's turn back on screen. And that's the beginnings of something right there. 
it needs to zoom into. I'm just gonna do the same zoom in roughly as the background. It doesn't need to be exact, you just need a little suggestion to scale. And now it's too in focus. My background's really out of focus and this is too in focus. So I'm gonna grab this guy. I'm gonna add that same Gaussian blur to it and I'm just gonna blur it. Let's try about 20, see what that looks like. Now we've got something pretty dynamic. I think this is cool, but why stop here when I can go even further? Let's stack some more of this stuff, shall we? Now I've got it behind him. What if I put it in front of him in between his arm? I'm gonna take these two layers and drag them up. Take my embers layer, hold down alternate and duplicate it up. So now it's in front of him, but we need to change some properties here. First off, now that it's in front of him, it would be more in focus, right? Because remember, his face is what's in focus. Let's make sure we select the right layer and change the blurriness to five. I'll lower the opacity to like 50%. I'm gonna crunch the curve a little bit on them, see if I can get rid of some of that glow, add a little more contrast to it, that usually works. All right, so I just kind of played around with the opacity and stuff and finally got it to kind of where I like it. And I think this looks pretty cool. Again, you could dial this up as much or as little as you wanted to. I think I'm even gonna do one more thing, which is put a bunch of blurry ones in the foreground. And I'm just kind of showing you guys, like this is like the, the Rolls, Rolls Royce nines version. So I'm gonna put it in the foreground. I'm gonna scale it up a bunch. So they're really big. So when these guys whip through, you're gonna see these big whips in the foreground like that. And I think that looks really cool. All right guys, so that's it. That is how to do parallax with a still image going from Photoshop into Premiere. I know it looks like a lot of steps and it is, but if you love making these Instagram stories, it may very well be worth it because you want to get heads to turn. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has probably been one of my longer ones, but you know, I'm really excited about this Instagram story stuff. I've got a lot more Instagram ideas. If you like this specific type of video, the Instagram video, let me know in the comments. I'm really kind of fishing right now for what kind of content you guys want. This channel is all about you and teaching you guys and answering your questions. Yeah, so that's about it. All right, guys, I am gonna hang up my hat and go to set. I got an all-nighter tonight, so I will talk to you guys later.